wanted to get a bigger picture of how the industry felt about food security. What did it mean to them? What were they doing and the kinds of challenges facing them? I was thrilled when Group Technical Director Mike Weinberg from Pilgrims agreed to meet on a video call for a chat. Hiya Mike, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Nice to great, meet you. Great. <laughs> nice to meet you too. So food insecurity is obviously a very broad issue, but what does it mean to you and what issues do you think are most pressing? Um, I think food security is all about really availability and uh, affordability of nutritious food to the average consumer. And I think um, whilst that sounds very simple, uh, actually the supply chains to and the way our food system works, it involves a huge range of uh, different players along the supply chain and uh, quite often a lot of complexity. So it's much easier sort of said than done, really. Um, in the global world that we live in, uh, with supply for much of our food coming from around the world, uh, that also means that uh, it brings a whole lot of other aspects into um, the complexity, if you like, from all the cost aspects associated with some of the challenges we've seen recently in food raw material prices, in energy costs and so on, to logistics, and then of course, all the regulatory elements around uh, imports and exports. So lots of complexity in there. And I think to add to all of that, we've now got the challenges of uh, sustainability, where uh, as conscientious producers, we are doing everything we can to drive towards uh, an improvement and greater efficiency in the supply chain um, and how we manage waste and all those sort of things. So a lot of complexity potentially there. So you've got um, what starts off as a really simple thing to deal with actually something that uh is, is very complex to to uh to get arranged and just to supply consistently i think particularly for me and if i think about the situation for our business as we uh look at the the situation we find ourselves in right now it's really about being clear about what our uh, national degree of food uh, self-sufficiency is going to be so at the one level actually getting clarity about that what sort of commitment we can get uh, as an industry from government to to that, and actually it, probably an arousal to some extent of public consciousness on the whole issue. And I think that is coming to the fore through the media uh, and has been in the last little while. And how we build resilience around that, because we, we've had times in the last few years where that's really been tested. And, uh, and so we need to consider where we go on that. Uh, and perhaps just specifically when it comes to the pig industry, being aware that 50% of all the pig meat consumed in the UK is imported. So, uh, you know, we have a great dependence on that. And it's not just the, the meat, the balancing meat that is brought in, but actually many of the food feed raw materials that are that we use are imported as well. So making sure it, it actually touches on all the things that I, I started off by speaking about, um, you know, we it's... We are at quite a turning point, really, and we need to think carefully about where, what our next steps are going to be. And what kind of challenges, you know, is your industry facing when it comes to tightening food security? Well, you know, just let's think about the last the last year. The last twelve months have been extremely challenging for the for the pig industry. We would have been in a situation where, um, in the middle of twenty twenty one. Uh, feed raw material prices started going up um, significantly around the world and pig producers were finding things extremely difficult from a financial point of view to make things meet. And this was really before it hit the headlines in any significant way uh, when we ran into the issues on the back of Ukraine and the geopolitical instability that we've seen in Europe in the last while, where that was actually something to aggravate the situation significantly. Feed raw material prices really rocketed. We also saw energy prices going in the same way. So from a cost point of view, pig producers have found things extremely difficult. And actually, we will now see probably anything between a 15 and 20% reduction in the size of the, the UK pig herd. You'll see similar changes across Europe, actually. Um, so the supply is going to be affected on that basis. But we've actually seen a whole range of other things uh, come in. We've seen a, a backlog of pigs that we, we were dealing with in the back end of 2021. We've had to work through all of that, the impact that that was having on farms. We've also seen other 
sort of effects really that lagged on from probably the back of COVID, but may have also been related to Brexit hangovers uh, in so far as labor challenges that we've seen both in our factories and farms. Um, and we've had to really work very hard and be innovative in how we try and find ways to keep our factories going through through what has been an extremely challenging time. So um, a whole range of things there from cost and inflation and so on, on the one hand, through to actually the operational constraints that have come around on, on labor and, and, and the likes. I often hear that collaboration is going to be the solution to a lot of challenges that we're facing. So, Mike, you know, how can, in your opinion, industry collaborate to increase food security? And how is Pilgrims UK addressing these issues? Collaboration is really the key. It really is. Um, we, we have a long history of working uh, to build supply chains, uh, really working into particular retailers, key customers that we've worked with for a long time, 20, 30 years. And uh, a focal point in all of that is about building collaboration up and down the supply chain. That's having uh, relationships with your customers where they understand uh, the supply chain, they understand the challenges at every stage. It's about making sure that actually your suppliers, the farmers you're working with, understand the uh, the supply chain as well and the challenges that everybody has. So you build a, a collaborative arrangement uh, and relationship with all the different uh, players up and down the chain in order to try and uh, iron out the challenges that inevitably come and go. And that makes you more resilient to the challenges when they come. And it also allows you to plan for how you develop and progress uh, with those supply chains as you go for, forward. It allows you, in fact, to innovate. So we've got a history as a business of working in that manner um, with our 340-odd farmers that we, we deal with. Um, but actually, as an industry, we need to look more widely at how we work in, in a similar manner um, and build those type of relationships. And that's some of this is structural. In order to get behind it, it requires a commitment from government to support that, that type of behavior. And it also requires the wider range of customers um, and particularly at retail level where they can really show leadership in, in building those relationships, supporting them. There's immense amount that can be done at that level. So, so I really think that, you know, the way for us to develop as an industry going forward from what is a tricky position that we find all find ourselves in right now is by cementing those relationships up and down, having a, a broader collective uh, objective going forward, common objective going forward. And, and what is, you know, Pilgrims UK doing in this respect? So, so what we would be trying to do, we uh, I hop back a little bit to the example I used earlier over these, these arrangements we that we've uh, I've described, we've been working with uh, the likes of Waitrose and co-op for many years um, in, in an arrangement, which actually makes sure that we produce specific products for them specific types of pigs they understand the challenges that we have and we have a commercial arrangement with them where there's a sharing of risk and an understanding of what the challenges might be around uh cost of production as you see a change in in raw material or energy costs or whatever it might be going up and down that there's a sharing of that that burden and a flattening effectively of the peaks which then means that all parties in the chain are um, are dealing with a more stable environment and actually what that also enables is because you have a more stable financial situation you can focus more on the broader uh, concept of sustainability so whether that be about how you're actually developing and promoting the, uh, the the products that you're producing whether it be on bringing new bits of innovation and and uh, um, clarity common uh, clarity about how you drive down your your uh, carbon footprint but all that sort of thing generally requires a long-term working relationship and that's the type of thing that we really have had success with with those particular accounts but actually what we're trying to do the same sort of thing with a wider range of our customers you mentioned support earlier you know what support would you say the industry needs okay so i think on the one hand it's about government setting the strategic um, and setting the scene in, in developing a culture which is going to be on the basis of what's our degree of self-sufficiency that's what's that temperature going to be set by government but then it's also about the specifics that come in behind that and how our government then supports the industry and 
you know, there, there are numerous examples. What we're doing on labor, for example, the industries have all been challenged since COVID on, on labor. What can government to get behind, do to get, to get behind that? There are various different programs in terms of training. We found recruitment really difficult in the last while, I, I think as many other industries have. But the skilled visa, uh, skilled worker visa has really helped us a lot. It's an expensive program, but nevertheless, we can get that working, probably smoothen out some of the bits there. That could make a real difference to where we are uh, going forward as well. I think the other thing I'll talk about is supporting innovation because we are aim to move with the times, uh, look at automating processes to a far greater extent, to what extent can government support us in, in that? And then finally, I think it's, it would be about how we build these more collaborative supply chains and getting behind uh, the, the, the sort of influence that they can have with the whole supply chain and particularly with the retail community as to how we go about doing that, incentivizing that to uh, to move that the, the industry in that direction. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Some really great points there. I mean, obviously about you know collaboration, investing in innovation, and then obviously mm. not being afraid to to invest um, as mm. well. Um, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really, really great to speak with you. Um, you know, uh, sorry we couldn't have met in person, but yeah, thanks so much for hopping online. That's a pleasure, Beth, and very nice to meet you. Look out for the next episode where I make a trip to Leicester for a chat with Kim Kettle, Farm Liaison Director of Long Course and Dairy, and Paul Eggleston, Acre Hill Farming and Long Course and Dairy's Chairman. 